So this is me trying Blender MCP, Model Context Protocol. Basically, it gives your AI agent, Cloud, access to Blender so you can do prompt things. Okay, so have you heard about this um, this new thing going around? Yeah, what is it? It's uh, it's like all over X, and uh, some people were calling it like the, the next evolution of 3D modeling. Really? Like a... a totally new way to do things yeah basically it's like imagine like you're you're trying to build a 3d scene in blender right no. and instead of like dragging and dropping and like you know messing with vertices and all that yeah it was technical stuff you just you just like describe what you want like just type it out yeah and and it like it builds it for you oh wow hold on so what like ai is involved here or something yeah yeah it's using um it's using claude anthropics claude yeah and it's it's like hooking it directly into blender no kidding. So it's not just like making a picture from a text prompt. It's like controlling the whole 3D software. Exactly. That's what's so wild about it. And and that's what we're going to be diving into today. It's called uh, it's called Blender MCP. Blender MCP. Okay. I haven't heard that term before. Yeah, it's pretty new. Um, it just kind of exploded online uh, over the last few days, actually. So this is cutting edge stuff. Oh, yeah. Like the, the newsletter we're looking at, uh, the AIDB. Uh, this post is from March 14th, 2025. Okay, so very, very recent. Yeah, so we're going to be looking at what Blender MCP is, why people are suddenly freaking out about it, uh, what you can actually do with it, like what are the possibilities, and also like, you know, what are the limitations and what are people saying about it? You know, like, is it actually the future or is it just hype? Right. I'm curious to see what the community thinks. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So first off, what is this thing? What is Blender MCP? Yeah, break it down for me. All right, so MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. Model Context Protocol. And, yeah. and basically, it's like this open source tool that lets Claude, like I said, talk directly to Blender and control it. So it's like a translator between like human language and like Blender's commands. Yeah, exactly, like a, a two-way communication channel. So it's not just one way. Claude's not just like barking orders at Blender. No, no, it's like they're having a conversation. Interesting. Yeah, it uses this thing called a socket-based server. It's like a direct connection between them. Gotcha. So like I say something to Claude, and it instantly relays that to Blender and something happens. Yep, and then Blender can like send information back to Claude so it understands the context of what's going on. Wow, that's pretty sophisticated. Yeah, and this opens up all sorts of crazy possibilities. Like what? Well, one of the big things is object manipulation. Okay. Like you can literally type, you know, create a blue sphere and boom, there it is in your Blender scene. What, really? Yeah, or make that cube taller and it like stretches it out. So just basic shapes or can it handle more complex stuff? No, it can do more than just shapes. Like you can control materials. Okay. Like, yeah. like tell it to apply a wood texture to something or, you know, change the color to red. So like interior design stuff. <laughs> Exactly. Or oh. like add a soft light behind the character or something like that. That's amazing. And then there's this other thing, code execution. Code execution. Now that sounds interesting. Yeah. So you can actually run Python code within Blender through Claude. Hold on. So I could like write a script to do something really specific and have Claude run it in Blender? Pretty much. Yeah. It gives you a ton of flexibility. But uh, the newsletter does mention that this is also like the most potentially dangerous feature. Danger? How so? Well, if you're not careful with the code you write, you could like crash Blender or mess up your whole scene. Okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense. So the advice is definitely to save your work a lot if you're going to be messing around with code execution. Good advice. All right, so we've talked about what it can do, but how does it actually work? Like, what are the nuts and bolts? Okay, so there are two main parts to it. There's okay. a Blender add-on. An add-on? Yeah, it's like a plugin, basically, and it's written in Python. It's called add-on.py. Add-on.py. And this add-on is what creates that socket server inside Blender, you know, that communication channel with Claude. Right, okay, so the add-on's like the receiver on Blender's end. Exactly. And then the other piece is the MCP server itself. The MCP server. Yeah, and that's another Python program. It's called server.py. Server.py, okay. And this is where the model context protocol is actually happening. This server is like the translator between Claude and Blender. It takes Claude's natural language and turns it into something Blender can understand. Exactly. Okay, so you need both the add-on and the server for this whole thing to work. 
yep, you need Blender 3.0 or higher and Python 3.0 or, or above. All right, so not the oldest versions, but pretty accessible for most people. Yeah, and getting started is pretty simple. Apparently you just install the add-on in Blender and then run the MCP server. I think the newsletter mentioned a tool called UVX for that. Yeah, UVX is pretty cool. It lets you download and run the server on the fly without having to do a full install. Nice, so you can just try it out quickly without a bunch of setup. Yeah, and if you want to be more integrated, there's a config file you can edit to make the server start automatically. Cool. So it sounds pretty user-friendly. Yeah, so that's the technical side. But like I said, this thing has blown up recently, like just in the past week. So why the sudden surge of interest? Well, it seems like the, the tipping point was around March 11th to 13th, 2025. Okay. That's when the project was released and some demos started appearing online. What kind of demos were they? Well, one of them was showing off this prompt-based creation thing, like someone typed, create a low-poly dragon with a pot of gold. And Blender actually built it. Well, hold on. So it wasn't just like a pre-rendered animation. They typed that in real time. Right. And Blender responded. Yeah, it wasn't instant. Obviously, like it took some time for Blender to actually model everything. But it was like watching the scene come together piece by piece based on those simple instructions. That's incredible. And then another demo was this 2D to 3D thing where they took like a drawing or a photo and Claude guided Blender to recreate it in 3D. Okay, so not just creating from scratch, but also like translating existing images into 3D models. Exactly. And these demos spread like wildfire. They were all over GitHub, YouTube X, you name it. I bet that got people's attention. Oh yeah. And the fact that it's all open source on GitHub, specifically this repository called Ahuja Seed slash Blender dash MCP. Ahuja Seed slash Blender dash MCP. That made it super easy for people to jump in and start experimenting. And probably contribute to the project too, right? Yeah, the newsletter mentions they're actively encouraging contributions. That's awesome. And what about the initial reactions from the community? Like when people first saw this stuff, what were they saying? Well, based on what I saw on X around March 12th and 13th, it was pretty much all positive. Like people were calling it insane, amazing, game-changing stuff like that. So a lot of hype, but also a lot of genuine excitement. Yeah, definitely. So, okay, hype aside, mm. what are the actual benefits here? Like why should people care about this? Yeah, is it just a cool tech demo or does it actually have practical uses? Well, I think the biggest potential benefit is that it could really streamline the 3D creation process. For who, like just the pros or could anyone use this? I think it could be beneficial for a lot of different people. Like yeah. obviously professional 3D artists could use it to speed up their workflow. Right, less time fiddling with technical details, more time focusing on the creative vision. Exactly. But it could also yeah. be great for developers who need to quickly generate 3D assets for games or apps or whatever. And what about just regular people like hobbyists who maybe aren't super familiar with Blender's interface? Yeah, I think that's one of the most exciting aspects of this is that it could make 3D modeling way more accessible. Just describe what you want and let the AI handle the technical stuff. Yep, and the newsletter gives some specific examples of how this could be useful. Like what? Well, like we talked about creating complex scenes like that dragon and the treasure just by describing it. Yeah, that would be amazing for like world building and stuff. Or imagine designing an interior layout. You just say, I want a modern living room with a fireplace and a big window, and boom, Blender starts building it. Wow, that would save so much time compared to doing it all manually. Yeah, and the fact that you get real-time feedback, like you can see Blender updating as you give commands, that makes it even more intuitive and efficient. It's like you're having a conversation with your 3D software. Exactly. Wow. So that's the upside, but of course there are limitations and challenges too. What are some of the things people should be aware of? Well, one thing is that you can't always expect to get perfect results with just a single prompt. Right, like if you try to describe a super detailed scene all at once, it might not get everything right. Yeah, sometimes you need to break down complex tasks into smaller steps. So like you might say create a forest and then create a path through the forest and then add a cabin next to the path or something like that. Exactly. You kind of have to guide it along. Okay. And what about that code execution thing? Are there any other downsides to that besides the potential for crashing Blender? Well, not really. I mean, as long as you're careful with the code you write, it's incredibly powerful. Yeah. But yeah, you definitely need to be aware of the risks. All right. So all in all, it seems like there's a lot to be excited about with Blender MCP, but is it actually the future of 3D modeling? Well, it's hard to say for sure. It's still very early days, mm -hmm. but the initial reaction from the community has been overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, all those insane and amazing comments. Exactly, and people seem to be really excited about the possibilities that it opens up. And like you said, it's not just about Blender. There's this 
desire to see simile AI integration with other tools too. Yeah, like the newsletter specifically mentioned Spline, which is another 3D design platform. Right, so it seems like people are really embracing this idea of AI-powered workflows. Yep, and it's definitely something to keep an eye on. So if anyone wants to dive deeper into this and see what all the fuss is about the the newsletter recommends checking out the GitHub repository. That's a Hujisid slash Blender dash MCP, right? Yeah, and also just keeping up with the latest posts on X. That's where a lot of this discussion and experimentation is happening. Okay, so bottom line, it sounds like Blender MCP is a really cool development in the world of 3D creation, and it could potentially change the way we approach 3D modeling in the future. Absolutely, and here's a final thought to leave you with. Think about this, like all this excitement and all these new possibilities that are opening up. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is just a temporary trend or is this the beginning of a bigger shift? A bigger shift, like what? Like are we moving away from this direct manipulation of 3D objects and towards a more collaborative process with AI? Where we're like partners with the AI instead of just operators. Exactly, and if that's the case, what kind of crazy stuff could we create that we haven't even imagined yet? It's definitely food for thought, and I'm really curious to see what happens next. Me too. Oh, yeah. I think we're just scratching the surface here. So, yeah, go check out those GitHub links and keep an eye on this space because things are about to get really interesting. For sure. This is one to watch. Definitely.